Hey, what's up guys, JB here, and welcome back to Future Look. So we are gonna be continuing on with the Final Fantasy V coverage here today from the Japanese side's three and a half year anniversary. And we're gonna be looking at Bartz today. Now Bartz I know is a hugely popular character from the Final Fantasy universe over in Japan, and now he's gonna have his own unit here in War of the Visions. And he's gonna be coming in as a free initial get as part of that anniversary celebration. And not only that, but he is gonna be our first 100 cost free initial get unit. Now I know what some of you out there are already thinking, what about Thancred? And my answer to that simply is, what about him? I think though, you know, given that precedence, you know, are we thinking that Bartz is gonna be kind of in that same kind of area? You know, is he gonna be nerfed? Is he gonna be kind of a weaker unit just because he is kind of handed out for free and has that 100 cost tag? Spoiler alert, absolutely not. He's gonna be much, much more. And that's exactly what we're gonna look at today with a deep dive into his kit and see exactly why that is. So with that said, let's get into it. So Bartz is gonna be coming in as a 100 cost light unit. He has base 3-1 movement and he can wear armor and helms. As I always say, that armor and helm access can definitely be a boon. It, it does offer up some nice additional gearing choices. Things like the Brigandine, Robs, and Kane's TMR, probably chief among them. Speaking of TMRs, let's look at what Bartz is bringing in with him. It's gonna be his spalder or shoulder plate here. I really do like the effect on this one. It's a 40% attack buff for yourself and your allies, which is fine enough. But more importantly, this is gonna provide you an innate haste to spell onto your attacks. And that's also something that does go to your teammates as well. So I do really love that tech. You know, knocking off haste from your opponents is definitely one of the best aspects from the general dispel utility. But as we know, not every unit gets access to that. So, you know, with haste seemingly everywhere in the games these days and some very powerful TMRs, especially that have come in recently, I do really like this one as sort of a counteract and, and balance to that. Now moving on into Bards' stats, and right off the bat, we're profiling as a bruiser you know, kind of heavily leaning into the HP and attack values here in his primary stats. So his HP, you know, it's not at an amazing level, but it certainly is pretty solid. It's going to be, uh, you know, above average here at just over 4,008. A very solid in his attack value, though, especially the base there at 425. And that does put him in the, within the top 10 in War of the Visions. After that, though, he's definitely a bit more average, a bit more run of the mill. Uh, the agility and the accuracy, you know, they're not uh, they're not bad. They, they do come a bit above average average, especially when you do include in the passives. I will say that, you know, that having kind of more more balanced or average stats across the board, it's not really a huge negative. You know, it just means that none of these areas are going to be a huge strength or a huge weakness for him, you know, which, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's fine. It just means that you, you do have some, some building to do if you do need to focus in any of these areas. Now, looking at his mitigation next, he's coming in with zero defense and zero spirit. Uh, that has been, you know, pretty common for the current era of the game. Hardly anyone, you know, outside of tanks really is getting benefit of that defense and spirit. Uh, for his damage resistances, he's going to get the big 25% to slash. You know, there was a time in the game where that was a quite an amazing value. For the current game though, you know, outside of some specific matchups, it's it's not really going to do a ton for him, you know, outside of maybe uh, helping protect against, you know, some of the bigger slash and perils out there. The rest of the resistances here though, they're, they're really not all that special, especially when we're considering Bartz as a bruiser. He does get 10% to missile, which isn't bad, uh, and then he is getting 5% to both strike and magic here. So kind of a similar story to the base stats. Not amazing, but really not all that bad either. Looking now at the mastery ability, Bartz does get a very nice one here. He's going to pick up 10 percent in his area resist and then 10 percent to slash res penetration both very valuable passives here to have if you do then take him up to level 140 and awaken him there again he's getting a, another nice boon here 20 percent reduced ap consumption 50 percent reaction block uh, so both very nice quality of life upgrades there he does get a third upgrade here which is going to be to his job 25 ability and that is going to add a conditional modifier increase onto that skill now, in terms of the reincarnation, I do think that Bartz could be a pretty nice target for some folks out there, maybe to invest some scrolls into for the general HP bulk and attack value that he can gain here in reincarnation. Now, personally, I do think that tanks and bruisers and carry DPS do tend to benefit the most, you know, from you know, reincarnating, you know, within that system. Uh, and there is a specific ability with Bartz here that we'll look at in a few minutes that uh, he would actually gain quite a bit there from that 180 attack value. All right, moving on now to passives and counters. And as we tend to see, you know, passive number one is going to be juiced up here. This one is going to get an EX upgrade on top of it. Uh, and it's a very, very nice passive. He's going to get attack, defense pen, accuracy, and 
and area resist here all in one. So, you know, this passive here, it does help him out in most of the areas that he's interested in. And I really can't see a situation where you would ever want to take this one off. Now, he does have several other nice passives here that, uh, you know, you could play with and, and pair along with that. Uh, for kind of an all-purpose build, you know, personally, I'm a fan of either options two or four to really amp up that attack value. And that option two in particular, it does allow him to get up to that 80% passive defense pen, which is very strong. Uh, you know, Bartz doesn't really have any active way to increase his defense penetration. He doesn't have any defense breaks, so, you know, as we'll look at here in a few minutes. So I do actually think that second one is a very, very solid choice for him. Now, I do also like option three for certain maps, you know, maybe where you don't have as much buffing opportunity. Uh, and thus, you know, you may be running a little bit lean on AP. Finally, he does have option five, you know, which does give him that 12% agility. Uh, it is going to be tied into a mobility increase, though. Uh, that is going to be, of course, great for manual play. Uh, for auto, it can also be good, you know, depending on the situation. But, you know, it may be not something that you're able to run at all times, you know, depending on the map and kind of how things are set up there in your initial turn sequences. And I do think kind of without that additional agility there on that passive, it does kind of set him back to more of an average level, you know, once passives are, are considered, you know, amongst UR units. Now, in terms of counters, he does have a couple options here that I do like. He has a physical reflex, which, you know, I think that's probably going to be the de facto choice, you know, for most folks out there. But on top of that, he does get fighting spirit from his Viking sub job. I think that that one is a little bit underrated, you know, in the game today. It gives a 20% chance to give you a flat 25% heal back. Now, of course, there is the fact that this comes along with a 25% chance to berserk you when it goes off. So obviously that is not good. But, you know, remember that Bartz does have the innate berserk resistance you know, within his uh, ailment resistances. So that's not one that he's going to have to worry about there at all. And I do like this one on Bartz for a couple of reasons. You know, for one, this is a counter that is going to be able to proc off on both physical or magical damage. You know, pretty important when you consider, you know, how many mixed damage type teams are out there. It does also have a slightly better chance of procking off coming in at that 20% base chance versus the 15% for the reflex. I think that, you know, when you consider how many units nowadays are getting some innate reaction block to kind of partially block some of these counters, having a higher base chance, you know, is always going to be, you know, better at the end of the day. All right, so let's start digging into the main kit here next, and we're going to start off with his buffs. The first one is going to be a self buff. This one is going to provide a 40% slash res penetration, as well as a follow up or chaser attack. Now, the details on Bart's follow up is that it's going to be a typeless, non elemental attack at a 50% mod. Uh, his, though, has an interesting attribute that uh, we haven't really seen before in that it does have a debuff tied into it that will dispel both protect and shell prior to the damage coming in so that already starting off you know i think is quite insane his follow-up though does have another unique attribute in that you're not actually following up on your own attacks but you do actually follow up on your teammates attacks assuming that they are within a three tile radius of Bart's when they attack. So this is an all new mechanic for the game. You know, we have never seen anything like this before. Not only that the follow up has that debuffing component tied into it, but you know, also that you can potentially chase attacks, you know, multiple times per attack round, you know, with the multiple teammates beside you. So you can get a ton of benefit from the skill. You can imagine your teammates attacking in an AOE radius, attacking multiple opponents. You're going to be able to follow up against all of those enemies all at once. And of course, that's going to be a great way to get around, you know, a lot of the area resistance that's built up on many units out there in the game and really expose, you know, some of their lack of uh, unit or single target resistance. Now, in my view, you know, this ability, I think, is, is absolutely broken for, for what, you know, savvy players are going to be able to do with it. I think in the hands of someone who really knows how to harness this and can get the most out of it, it's simply one of the most powerful abilities that we've seen coming in the game in a very, very long time. So that's definitely a lot to say about one buff, but I do think that it is that good. His second buff, I think, is, is much more standard, you know, much more, you know, kind of what we're used to seeing. Being. This one's going to provide, you know, his uh, bulk and survivability. It's going to give him a three hit physical barrier at a 70% value. And then it's also going to give him a 20 area resist. And that area resist also does get passed on to his allies as well. Now, personally, I do like it when these party buffs do have a barrier component tied into them. It means that it's, you know, it's not going to be something that they're looking to double buff, you know, in an auto setup. Uh, that's something that we've seen in the past with uh, with Wind Glaciella. So it does make it, uh, you know, very nice for kind of setting up uh, initial turn macros. 
So taking a look at the attack skills here next, skill number one is gonna be a range three with a range height of one. It's a straight line single target attack. It's gonna be coming in with that low 121% mod. It does have two effects as well coming in post damage. That's gonna be a break to both the attack and the agility of the target. So, you know, nothing crazy here, but uh, you know, I do like this fine enough. Skill number two is gonna be a targetable range three with a range height of one with a plus one there on the cross AOE. It's gonna be coming in with that medium 165 mod. Uh, we get a bit of utility here prior to the damage with that Courage Dispel. So, you know, that's actually really nice. You know, there have been, uh, you know, a number of big time damage dealers that have been coming into the game lately with that Courage effect. Think about Bradley, Vega, Heo, Reagan, you know, among the host of others that, you know, have had it from the past. You know, of course, that follow up, you know, that we were just talking about as well earlier, you know, that is another way that actually Bards can help, you know, the team deal with uh, not only Courage, but Re-Raise. You know, so, uh, you know, Bards definitely is going to be you know, nice tech for your team to kind of help out with those special statuses. Now, skill number three is going to be a large diamond AOE. It's going to be topping out at that range of five. This one's going to be hitting very hard, though. It's coming in with that large 200% mod. Uh, this one does have a pre-damage imperil tied into it on top of that for that 30 area resist reduction. Now, the one caveat there is that this imperil is going to be just for this particular cast, just for Bart's. Even so, you know, even despite that very solid skill here, it's going to hit very, very hard. Now, skill number four is going to be his job 25 ability. It's got a range of three, with a, again, with a range height of one. It's a single target attack. This time, it's going to be carrying an extra large 240% mod. Not something that we see on, on every damage dealer out there. Uh, this one does have a couple effects, you know, coming in with it. Prior to the damage, it's going to completely shut off the counters for your target. Always love to see that utility, you know, with some of the amazing counters that have been coming into the game as of late. Now, this one also is going to absorb 50% of the damage that you deal. So, assuming you dead you know 8,000 damage boom 4,000 health is going to be healed back directly onto you so that's very nice you know that, you know that's not even considering any sort of healing power that might amp that up even further now as we mentioned with this 140 awakening this is going to be getting a conditional modifier increase added to it you know when you take him to that level uh, and it's going to be increasing it by a 60% modifier so bringing it up to a 300 mod if the target has either haste or AP restore present on them of course both of those statuses are very common out there you know to be use in uh, pvp so you know this skill is going to hit like an absolute truck now last up we do have the limit burst here uh, the lb itself is going to actually give him a skill upgrade when you use it it's going to take that large diamond aoe that we looked at it's going to reduce that from a 32 ap cost down to a 20 ap base cost uh, remember that bart's does have that ap consumption perk as well that we looked at for 20 percent he does actually have a weapon that we're going to look at here in a moment that gets him another 15 percent on top of that so after after he uses his LB, that diamond skill is now going to go to just a 13 AP cost, which is very, very insane. Now, on this LB, he is going to be getting another Selfish and Peril here. This has a 38% Slash Res and Peril. Again, that's going to, just going to be tied in to this Imperil just for Bards only. Now, this skill is just a bit limited in the range, just a range of four on this one and a range height of one. So, you know, in a lot of cases, he will be preferring actually to lead off with that uh, large diamond AOE, you know, depending on how things are looking in battle. Now, I have to say that the animation on this LB is absolutely beautiful. I love all the colors here, and it's it's following closely kind of what they started with, with Bards and Dissidia with all the various weapons. So very, very cool stuff here with the LB. Now, in terms of the main kit, you know, immediately jumping out to me is kind of the lack of a barrier break here. He doesn't as well have any multi-hits skills here in uh, in the main kit to make up for it. So, you know, definitely some utility, I think, that you'd want to be considering for a teammate to go, you know, with Bards uh, into PvP. All right, so let's take a look at the sub jobs here next. He's going to get two additional abilities here in the main job sub. Skill number one is going to be another attack for him. It's a single target, range of five, so very nice range on it. Uh, no effects on the skill, though. Uh, really the only thing special about this one is that it is a typeless damage attack, meaning that it will bypass damage specific resistances. So it's just going to be checked against unit resist, defense, and then any light resistance that may be present on the target. So I do think this could be potentially beneficial for Bart's. Uh, he just has that 10% innate slash res penetration. Uh, he does have the active buff for it as well, but you know, that can always uh, potentially be dispelled in battle. Now skill number two, it's going to be another self buff here for Bart's. Uh, this one's pretty decent. It's going to give him a 
25% HP bonus, does have a regen effect, and then 30 slash attack, you know, while that regen is active. Uh, so both fine enough skills here, you know, they're both, you know, decent enough. Uh, I don't think that I would actually use this job though in the, in the majority of cases. I, th I think, you know, mostly you're probably gonna roll with this next job that we'll look at, and that is gonna be Martialist. Now with the Martialist job, he's gonna have access to a second damage type of strike. Uh, it will give him access to an innate courage as well. Uh, and then a 60% attack buff that he can throw on there as well. So all very nice things there. Uh, he does also get that three-step star strike ability, which is a, a three-hit strike chaining attack. So I do really like this sub job for Bart's, you know, even if it was just for the courage alone. Very, very nice. Now for the third sub job, Bart's is getting Viking here as well. Personally, I don't think that this one is really going to be worth using unless you really, really wanted that defense pen buff that comes along with Rebellious Spirit. Uh, I don't really think he needs that in most cases, especially if you're going to be running, you know, both defense pen passives. It's going to be able to ignore defense very, very easily. Now, unfortunately, one of the better Viking skills does have a very, very long cast time associated with it, which does make it very, very difficult to use in PvP situations where units have haste or very high agility. So I think in the majority of situations, you know, just forget that Viking's there. Use either his main job sub or, or preferred, you know, use that Martialist. I think that's going to be the, the, the best way to go. So a new weapon's going to be released alongside Bart's. Uh, I'm going to be highlighting the Assault version here today. Uh, it does have a very nice aim build to it as well. It gets 28 base accuracy. So I would actually look to build up both of these if uh, I'm building up Bart's. Now the unconditional passive on this one's going to be that standard 15 slash attack. And then for Bart's, it's going to get three conditional passives. The first one's going to be that 15% AP consumption that we mentioned. On top of that, he's going to get 30% reaction block, which is going to put him at 80% innate, including his mastery. Uh, on top of that, he's going to get 20% slash res pen here as well. Definitely much needed. So a really nice weapon here, specifically for Bart's. Of course, there's definitely, you know, quite a few other nice sword options out there in the game. Personally, I think the only one that I might consider outside of this one might be that Blood Sword to combo along with his Job 25 uh, Absorb ability, kind of give him even more heal back potential there. Now, we will have a new job-based vision card coming in with Bart's as well. Uh, this one's showcasing a scene here from the game in, in the original graphics, which is very cool. Now, despite both Ferris and Lena being pictured on the card, neither of their job classes can actually use this one, which I think is definitely a missed opportunity from Gumi's end. I think part of the fun with these collab units is maybe trying to mix them together onto the same team. And unfortunately, this card doesn't really give us that option. Uh, Bart's though, he definitely can use it. You know, it's going to be a very nice one for him. Uh, it does come in with that human killer and the accuracy. Uh, remember, he doesn't have any 100% hit in his kit. Uh, so that, that accuracy can be very important for him in some situations. And then the human killer is, is one of the best ways you, that you can amp up that follow-up attack. So overall, it's going to be a very nice card for the light elements that's definitely the most featured you know of all the elements here on the card also notable that all three tanks from the elements uh wall engelbert and mariel are all included there and then you do have wing stern which is a perfect pairing with bard sub as another damage dealer now outside of light there's definitely a lot of other good units here on the card uh, some nice tanks here with mons june celis fryavia and definitely some nice damage dealers here as well you can look at bradley noctis esther lightning uh you know whether you actually primary this card i think kind of depends on the situation you know if you're trying to maybe go more offensive focused but you know at worst it's it's definitely a very very nice secondary card now speaking of jobs uh, let's take a look at bartz's in specific and, and his group is going to be sword b otherwise known as the warrior group so at least as of now in jp they have six total cards here uh you know maybe one to two weeks after bartz comes in they do get that minotaur card which is the final one that you see there now this group is definitely helped out in a big way by the global original card, uh, that heal card there that gets that agility and magic resistance. Aside from that one though, there's definitely a lot more offensive oriented cards here within the group, at least so far. So despite having, you know, some very nice tanks and damage dealers here, you know, specifically within the warrior group, I think that uh, it is held back, you know, just a little bit, you know, until they get at least, at least one unit resist and one area resist card that you can use to kind of fully develop, uh, you know, a team within this group. 
to be clear, I think you could still definitely build a nice rainbow team here, but uh, you know, I think it might just be a little bit more limited for uh, multi-round PvP. All right, flashing over now to our timeline for 2023. We did just get Kefka here in global. You know, he was pushed up quite a bit here in the schedule. And then we are looking at Vega coming into the game this week. Uh, Bartz, as we did mention, is going to be that free initial get coming in as part of that Final Fantasy V collaboration. So we are expecting that sometime in mid to late August as part of that three and a half year anniversary for the game. Now, in terms of other light units along the way, we are expecting Sweetheart Miranda sometime within the next month, most likely. Uh, I think here in Global, you know, Sylvie definitely has stolen, you know, a little bit of her thunder. There is some, a little bit of redundancy, you know, in terms of their kit. Miranda, though, just comes in at a 70 cost. So, you know, she certainly is a bit more compelling for uh, the cost limited formats. On the flip side, though, I think everyone out there does have Raft's release marked on their calendar. Uh, she is expected to be in early August, you know, probably as our final unit before we go into that three and a half year celebration for the game and into this uh, Final Fantasy V collaboration. Now, Bartz, you know, certainly is has himself set up to be a very nice counter and kind of going toe to toe against those dark teams. So, you know, I do think that, you know, specifically for that reason, everyone out there should, uh, you know, at least consider building up Bartz up to his full potential. All right, guys, next up is going to be the mock builds. Uh, again, this week, we're going to be going for more of an all around build here. Uh, and I'm going to be doing it to here today with Bartz in a mono light team. Uh, I'm going to be pairing him with uh, Warrior of Light and the new Winged Stern unit. Now, while he's still a very nice tank in this game, you know, just due to the insane self-healing that he has access to at level 140. And then Stern, you know, he's a very nice area of effect damage dealer. You know, considering Bartz's follow-up attack, that's going to allow us to leverage that very, very nicely. Now, I am going to be highlighting, you know, some limited stuff here in the build. So it's definitely not a cheap or easy one. But, you know, I think it is a very good one and, and a balanced one if you do have access to the pieces here. Now, starting with the equipment, I'm going to be going with Bartz's blade for the AP management. As I mentioned earlier, I think that Blood Sword is, is a good option too, mainly if you're trying to juice up that follow-up attack because the Blood Sword does have a human killer modifier tied into it, which is pretty hard to find on, on some equipment. Now pairing with that, I am going to be using the Genji Glove on him here as well, uh, and that is to get that 10% final damage modifier there, again, to sort of juice up that follow-up attack. Now for the TMR, I'm going to be using Kane's. Uh, it's one way that you can get haste onto him. It does have two uses, which is very nice, uh, but certainly there are other TMRs out there that can have the same effect, you know, if you have access to them. Now for the Esper here, for pure attack power and human killer, the best choice is going to be Dark Bahamut. If you do need more accuracy in your build though, and you're kind of afraid of being picked off by an evade unit, uh, as always, uh, OG Odin is going to be a great choice there. Now for vision cards, we're going to be using that Final Fantasy XIV Scions of Twilight card. This card is an amazing one for, for a, a light slashing team. You're going to get that combination of magic resist, slash penetration and even some HP there all in one. And then in Bartz's slub slot, I am going to be going for that new Final Fantasy V card that we just looked at there as well. It is actually a nice one specifically for this party as all three units that we're using here can take advantage of it. Aside from that, it's going to be a pretty standard sort of a light party a vision card setup here. We're going to have Bahamut for the agility and unit resistance. We have Dark Bahamut for the area resistance. Uh, and then we're going to have plenty of offensive punch here in the setup as well. Uh, Dark Bahamut is also going to give us that slash attack. Beowulf again is going to give us that slash attack. Uh, and then we we do get some attack up bonus there from Rob's card. Now in the build today, I didn't go for a full anti-dark setup, but within the trust stone build, you know, I do kind of give myself a little bit of flexibility there and just a bit of protection there against those dark teams. So I do have crit evade here. I've got stop resistance for the dark Fina matchup. In the middle stone, I have the HP and luck pretty standard there. Uh, and then on stone three, I'm going to have that dark resist as well as the agility debuff resistance, which I think is a very good one to have uh, going into Raph. She does have a, a large AOE agility break uh, on one of her attacks. Now on the offensive stones there on the right side, I'm going to have that acquired AP and healing power there on stone one. Healing power, I think, is going to be a nice choice for Bartz, you know, not only to help out that job 25 uh, absorb ability that, ha that he has, but also if you choose to run the blood sword on him, you know, it's also going to amp up the healing from, uh, from that as well. I think that can be really helpful in a team like this that doesn't have a dedicated support to kind of help keep them topped off. Now on stone two, we're going to have pretty standard here, attack and defense penetration. He doesn't have that 
on any of his equipment, so that's definitely much needed here. Uh, and then on stone three, we're, we're kind of filling out some offensive passives. We're gonna bring in that light attack as well as the dexterity. And then I'm gonna be tying all of these into an agility set. I think that is a must if you are not running uh, Bartz's agility passive. If you don't run that one, his agility is definitely much more middle of the pack. So that is gonna be the build, guys. Uh, you know, if you wanna have a closer look at it, as always, I'm gonna have a link to it down below in the description. So what is my verdict today on Bartz? Kicking it off here with the positives, it's all gonna start with that insane follow-up attack. I think that's actually the best and most unique part of his kit. And that ability alone, I think is gonna enable him to have a lasting impact on the meta because of the creative things that you're gonna be able to do with it through team play, while also being a very nice natural counter against both re-raise and courage. Bartz, of course, is not gonna be a one-trick pony. Uh, he does have good overall bulk and sustain through his job 25 ability and access to courage. He does have very nice damage on top of that, stemming from a strong base attack value and very high damage modifiers. Bartz is also going to be very flexible in, in how you're able to build him. You can either go for more bulk or damage, or you can even increase his speed or mobility. I think he's also a unit that's not really going to have to worry at all when it comes to AP management. He has access to an amazing 35% reduced AP consumption through his mastery and through his weapon. On the more negative side though, Bartz is definitely going to be a bit limited in some of his utility as some of the nice imperils that he has access to are very sort of self-centric and selfish in that they are only for himself on those singular attacks. On top of that, I do have just a little bit of concern, you know, when it comes to his base totals for both speed and agility. They're definitely much closer to middle of the pack, as we've mentioned. They're definitely not bad, though, by any means. You know, if you do put some focus into them, I think that he can perform very, very well. Just something to be cognizant of. Now, Bartz also doesn't really carry any utility when it comes to things like barriers or healing sustain either. Uh, both very common survival tools in the current state of the game. And uh, I think there are going to be two key ways that you can actually shut out Bartz. Now, another potential problem area here for Bartz is that it's really going to be around his slash res penetration. If he doesn't get that active buff online or it gets dispelled, you know, during the middle of the fight, he can really be shut down, you know, very, very hard by highly slash resistant tanks or bruisers. Now, my last point here, it, it's not really a negative for Bartz per se, but uh, more a negative for everyone else around him. And this is definitely going to be kind of a soapbox moment for me here. Uh, in my opinion, his follow-up attack, you know, for the allies is way too good and difficult to defend against. And I do think that this is a problem that Gumi is thrusting onto the entire player base by, you know, handing out Bartz as a free initial get unit. And I have no doubts that they're doing that to kind of maybe sell us a solution to it down the road once everyone has built him up and has started using him in the game. And I am particularly worried about this ability for the cheese that you can come up with it and build around in manual will play. And I would go so far to say is it's probably my biggest concern for that game mode in the history of War of the Visions. So personally, I do hope that Gumi is working on cooking up some kind of TMR or unit uh, that can maybe provide some kind of map-wide field effect that can shut off those uh, follow-up attacks entirely from a distance. Now, a pure dispel of those follow-up attacks like Sadali can provide for the team, it it's certainly pretty nice, but I don't think that that alone is good enough, you know, for the manual arena, especially due to the presence of long-range, large air of effect missile units. At the end of the day though, you know, despite being a free initial get, Bartz is truly worthy of that 100 cost tag. He's coming into a strong position, not only with a good established element, but also in a good weapon group that will have some promise for the future. And in my opinion, I think that he is even better than Winged Stern, who was a premium 100 cost gacha unit. And while I do have some balance worries, you know, regarding that follow-up attack that we were just talking about, at least until there's some legitimate counterplay against it, at the very at the very least, it certainly will be fun to play with, you know, as long as it's coming from my side of the map. So there it is, guys. That is my future look into Bartz. I think he's going to be an absolutely incredible unit. And at least for now, you know, it's looking to be the best of the bunch, you know, early on from this Final Fantasy V collaboration. I would definitely pull him if we had to. Thankfully, we don't. Uh, still, though, I will say it's no cheap proposition to build even free units now in the 140 era, especially when they are limited time like Bartz here. Now, despite 
despite all of that, I do think that he's gonna be well worth the effort and cost to do so. He definitely is gonna get a big stamp approval from me. And I do think that he's going to be a key part in trying to ward off the walls of wrath that uh, you know, we're no doubt gonna be seeing in Guild Wars in the near future. But now I wanna know what you guys are thinking. Are you excited for this collaboration? Are you gonna build this unit? And are you as worried about me for the ramifications of that follow-up attack in the game? Hit me up in the comments down below and let me know. While you're down there, if you enjoyed the video today, hit that like button. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. And that's really all that I have to say for today. So as always, stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next one.